Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I received my Udo X86 Advanced Single Board Computer. You can call it Udo or Udo, doesn't matter to me. So this is their $165 advanced version. It has a Celeron quad core 3160 at 1.6 gigahertz and it does turbo up to 2.24. Four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Intel HD 400 graphics up to 640 megahertz. 32 gigabytes of onboard storage with the option for a SATA drive or an M.2 SSD. First up, I wanna do a size comparison before I get into anything. Here's the Asus Tinkerboard, same size as the Raspberry Pi 3, an Odroid XU4, and we have a Raspberry Pi 3 here. So as you can see, the Udo X86 is much bigger. It's about two pies big and it's much more expensive than the Asus Tinkerboard or the Raspberry Pi combined. The cool thing is, this is a Braswell Intel x86 CPU. You can run Linux, Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 8, Android x86. There are tons of operating systems that you can run on this board. They also make several versions of the board, as you can see here. I have the $165 version, which is the Advance Plus, 4 gigabytes of RAM, the 3160 Celeron. Going from this, to the highest end one, I don't think you're gonna see much of a performance increase. Now you do get four more gigabytes of RAM, but the CPU isn't much faster at all. The board has two mini display ports, HDMI, gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0, and your power in. It's a power jack, 12 volts, three amps. The board is fully Arduino compatible, and it actually has an Intel Quark SE 32 megahertz CPU, plus a 32-bit ARC Core 32 megahertz CPU. So the board does have a lot going on. I'm gonna do some tests using Arduino. It is Arduino 101 compatible. The underside here, we have a SATA port, so we can use an external hard drive and power. Also have an SD card slot and an M.2e and an M.2b slot, or an SSD and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth if you wanna add that. The company says it's 20 times faster than the Raspberry Pi, but I don't look at this as Raspberry Pi competition. It's way more expensive, and it runs an x86 CPU. There are tons of operating systems that are gonna run on this board. I did receive some accessories. This is a 12 volt, three amp power supply to power the unit itself. They also sent me a Transcend 128 gigabyte M.2 SATA, which is a big plus because I had a few laying around, but they're in use right now. They sent me power for the SATA drive, and they also sent me a case. So this is an acrylic top and bottom to the case itself. Not really a full enclosure, but this thing's probably gonna get hot using that x86 CPU. Also sent me a nice Udo Mark HDMI cable. And I found in the pack, they did send a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, so I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Very easy to do. I'm gonna also install the M.2 SATA right on top, and then we'll throw the case together and see how it looks. So everything fits snug. Now I'm not expecting too much performance out of this. It does have a 1.6 gigahertz quad core Intel CPU. It does turbo up to 2.2, but this is pretty much the same CPU in some newer netbooks, even older netbooks. Out of all the OS's that I can install, I chose Windows 10 first. It does not come with a key, so you're gonna have to either buy a key or do what you're gonna do. As you can see, the CPU is clocked at 1.6 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to almost 2.3. Four gigabytes of RAM. Windows 10 is a heavy operating system compared to some Linux distributions, and that's what I'm probably going to end up running on this, is a full-blown Linux distribution. Not sure which one yet. But uh, down the road, I'm going to make some more videos on that. Also want to test Android on this. So this initial first video that I'm making won't have many tests in it. I did do some Geekbench testing. Ran this three different times. Not too impressive. This is a low-end x86 CPU. Scoring around the same as a lot of the $200, $250 notebooks or netbooks. So I know the Geekbench test on Windows versus like Android is a bit different, but I do have some ARM-based single board computers that score higher than this. They are a bit more expensive, but it's good to see that ARM is coming a long way. I know the test is a little bit different, but I'm scoring about 5,000 with one of my high-key 960 boards. 
Next up, I ran a couple of browser-based JavaScript benchmarks. This is Octane, and I scored a 6,904. Not too shabby. And finally, I did run a Sun Spider because I run this on everything, and I scored a 417 milliseconds. To put this in perspective for you, the Raspberry Pi 3 scores anywhere from 2,400 to 3,600. Lower is better. I'm not comparing them, but a lot of people are going to want to know how much faster this is than the Raspberry Pi 3. So overall, I've actually had a good experience with this board. I've messed with it for about 24 hours now. YouTube playback is fine at 1080p. I haven't tested 4K yet. I need to bring it out in the living room to my big TV. Everything seems to work. It is a lot faster than the Upboard or the Latte Panda. Um, they run a little Atom CPU. It's a bit slower. This has more cache. I do notice a big difference in browsing the web from this CPU to the Atom CPU that's in the Upboard or the Latte Panda. So it does feel faster because, I mean, it does have a higher clock. But the difference isn't that significant. It's not like going from an old 2 gigahertz Core 2 Duo to an i7 or anything like that. I mean, it's very small, but it is noticeable. I plan on doing a lot of videos with this board here. I want to test a lot of different operating systems, gaming performance, emulation performance. Also going to throw some video editing and photo editing at this board and see what it does. Overall, I haven't spent enough time with this board to suggest it to somebody just yet. I'm going to be doing a lot of testing this week and this weekend. As you can see on my desktop, I have a lot of games installed that I need to do some videos on, but I did test Grand Theft Auto V. Theoretically, this board should handle older games like Half-Life, Left 4 Dead, Portal, just fine. 30 FPS, maybe 60 at 720p. But I tried Grand Theft Auto V just to see what happens. Let's go over to the gameplay footage now. Grand Theft Auto V on the Udo X86 Advanced. Everything's on low, 600 by 800 resolution, and I had to zoom in. I'm surprised we're getting 13 FPS out of this. It's very hard to control. As you can see, some textures are disappearing and stuff like that. Dips on down to about 10, but I wasn't expecting it to run at all. I thought it would just crash as soon as it started up. It's very hard to play. It took me about five minutes to kill all the police officers in that first scene. I'm just walking down the road now, and I pretty much die immediately as soon as I switch over to Michael. It's just really hard to control it at 10 FPS to see where your cursor is, get that shot in. But it does run it, runs it very poorly. Like I said, theoretically, this should be able to run Half-Life, Half-Life 2, Portal, Left 4 Dead, maybe even Borderlands, and I'm going to be doing videos on that. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.